Stockholm one. I know it's <laughs> already. <laughs> oh, this camera. Hi! Hello! May the 4th be with you. May the 4th be with you too. Ryan's not as committed. I'm wearing my Star Wars shirt. It's close enough to Star Wars. Yeah, it's pretty close. Darth Vader so, and uh, <laughs> Slayer. Good. Ryan, why don't you tell the good people at home what we're doing today? Because I don't know, honestly. <laughs> um, I kind of just rocked up, and Jonathan's like, let's film some You can clearly tell he just rocked up, his hair is all over the park. <laughs> yeah, we are... We're going to be talking about some movies, I think. Some we, movies we saw during we, the interim period. We need a bit of a title for this segment, let's call it... Raw <laughs> Movie <laughs> Fancy Opinions. Movie Junkies. Movie no, wait, junkies. that's taken. That's taken, definitely taken. I'll just call it the Brothers Review, or like the Brothers Nitpick. I don't know, working title for now, the Brothers Roll. Review. Raw, yeah. The Brothers Review, Uncut. Raw. Yeah, so, so if anything goes terribly wrong, or boring, you we do, yeah. see it. We do actually upload these raw, so it's not, it's not as if we yeah, have this, time to clean up any. Raw. Yeah, you guys should see the unedited stuff of some of our videos. It's so oh, bad. It's, it's, <laughs> we're just, like, doing heroin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? I gotta get jazzed! <laughs> Wow, that got uh, pretty dark. Anyway, mm. we're going to be talking about a couple of films that came out recently. Two, to be exact. Two films that came out recently. The first one, we're going, to, we're going to be doing the Fast and Furious 7 that we yeah. saw. Couple, was that a couple of weeks ago? A couple of weeks ago, something like that. Fast yeah, and Furious yeah. 7. Yeah, and then we'll probably do um, Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. Either in this video or like in another separate video. That's correct. We'll probably, I don't know, we might be able to squeeze in unless we somehow run out of space. Like super sidetracked. Like in past seven, start talking about just everything. Is, is yeah. So um, before we begin here, I'll just point out spoiler alerts to um everyone, everyone who That's hasn't true. seen it. Although if you haven't seen it by now, you probably live under a rock. It's probably out of the cinema. Yeah, and yeah, and if you haven't seen it by now, then it probably doesn't matter enough to you to go and watch it anyway. So yeah. like. <laughs> Just spoilers <laughs> now is what I'm saying. Like, just be prepared. Alright, so now we got that out of the way. There's cars in this movie. Cars. There's yeah. a lot of cars. Typical yeah. of every Fast and Furious movie. Um, it's pretty fast. It's pretty furious. It's pretty fast. It's pretty furious. Um, some of the... I don't know. I feel like when we were watching it, there were some sequences that were just like... You could have done that without the cars. Like... Yeah. You really didn't need the car for that. Oh, they whatever plan they had, they basically <laughs> had to somehow shoebox cars into it. Yeah, yeah, and I'm pretty sure like it's parachuting. I mean, yeah. what in flame and oh, oh it's god, just... it's like uh, it's, it was horrible. The first, I think, the first sequence that we saw was them planning to add, attack like a fortress or something like that. Mm, yeah. Some crap. Because oh no, it was um that. Terrorist guy from Africa, wasn't it? They yeah, kidnapped they were, a hacker lady and they who knew about the God's it. Eye or yeah. some program that was like NSA hacking on steroids. Yeah, and so they wanted to get him, and of course they had to uh, parachute cars in there into the. Way so it's like a curvy like S highway, and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna parachute cars out of the thing," and it seemed kind of like a good idea, being that you know you're going up against other cars. But I feel like you could have done that with one car. And I feel like Jason Statham just proves that it could be done with one car. <laughs> yeah. like, they're all parachuting this stuff in, and he... Throughout the entire movie, he comes in more prepared than them, basically. Everybody else. Yeah. He has, like, all these plans figured out. He even carries a handgun in the final battle, and Toretto just has, like, a sawn-off yeah. with, like, two shots. And I'm like, eh. I feel like Toretto's not taking this as seriously as you think. It's just Toretto is, like... I'm gonna drive well, at it. We like to label the I'm gonna drive at it plan. Leroy Toretto Jenkins. <laughs> Leroy Toretto Jenkins. <laughs> first son of Leroy himself. <laughs> yeah. Their first, even his first, like, encounter with, um, Statham. Statham. Oh, yeah. They just drive at each other <laughs> and, like, smash up two perfectly good cars and then they get out and they're about to, like, get in a fight. And Stan pulls out a gun. Yeah, and the Stan pulls out a gun, and Toretto's like, I didn't think this through. He just pulls out, like, a steel bar from the... Stan's, like, reinforced his car and everything like that, and Toretto's like, I'm gonna just drive at it. It's just... <laughs> and Tor Toretto's thing is like, I don't know, what is it, when he hits Stan, he's like, oh, you just reinforced your car, that's like carrying weighted gloves in a fight. I'm like, he's going to kill you! <laughs> you reinforce your car! This isn't the streets anymore, Toretto. <laughs> This guy's serious. It's so... It's, some of it is just super... Throughout the entire movie, Toretto's just... I'm a drive at it. That's like... Yeah. His solution. Pretty much. Like, not it's like marriage problems. He's just... I'm gonna, gonna drive, drive at it. it. I'm a race at it. 
you know, him and Letty had the marriage problems, I'm going I'm to drive right into it. And then she's just like, right, I'm dying. Yeah. That's and then, her line in the entire Yeah, movie. the whole time, she... I don't know if she was a great character, because, like, House of Pierce has been out a while, like, since I think early she 2000. was an okay character. She was an okay character until she somehow died and then came back to... I don't know. I don't watch the series often. Yeah, like, I'm, I am not so much. It's been a really long time. time. It has. Really long. Throughout the entire movie, her line is literally just... I die. die. And then, like, I can't remember, and I wish I did. Blah, and blah, blah. Was, like, maybe just right. <laughs> she's like, right, or die. <laughs> Uh, that's a good movie. Yeah, it's great. Um, what was the other thing? There's so many nitpicks, especially for that little highway race yeah, scene. Yeah, oh, the Just that one scene was where all of our problems. I think like nitpicks in one. <laughs> First of all, you have um, Mr. Walker going up against highly trained kung fu guy in the. Yeah, that that was an amusing sequence. I thought it was. That was a good sequence. I mean. He got it. I don't know where he learned to fight, to be honest. Like, let's just put it out. These guys drive cars, and somehow... Their fighting skills are more like, I'm just gonna drive. <laughs> they live the way they drive. <laughs> Pretty much. Dangerously. Oh, and when he finally takes that guy down by attacking, attaching what, a washing machine or something to his leg, pushing him down the shaft. Oh, yeah. And he's like, too slow. Yeah. Let's just put it this way. The script is what you expect. There's tons of corny... Highly one one Toretto himself is just... Toretto just spends a lot of the movie being, like, muscly and sad just, and yeah. angry and muscly. He's, he's just face palm. You almost think, like, he's just contemplating his pecs a lot in the scene. He's just like... <laughs> and then he just wakes up the right and tries to pull in a one-line <laughs> yeah, to make... Make yeah. it seem like but we're being we're being we're being like sharp edged and cruel about it. It was a good film. Like it was really well acted. It's yeah, just you, like you go in there expecting and you get what you expect expecting. What you you get what you you get what you pay for basically. And it's yeah. it's a great film. Um, another nitpick with the Kirby Drive thing was overly like I just felt it was overly dangerous the way they rescued the hostage. They're like we're gonna I'm grab her and car. we're gonna throw her out of the back of the car onto yeah onto yes. another car. And it's a good thing they're all expert drivers and no one drives drunk. They could have honestly had any plan. Any <laughs> plan. They, they could have, like, punctured tires and, like, gone in and, basically. like, shot it out and pulled her out of there and put her in a car. And but no. They, they end up surprised when, like, 50 cows pop out of the sides of the truck they're trying to take her out for. Yeah. It's just knee guns. Like, that's an overt response. No, that's the response you get from an international terrorist. Not. It's just... They, they have a lot of luck, those guys. They have a lot of luck. Like, the, um... What is it? There was the bit where Roman goes off the road and into, like, the bushland with, um, and trying to follow Dom, because Dom's chasing Shaw, like, Statham's character, and they're speeding through the woods, and they're, like, clipping through trees, right? And I swear there has to be a point where one of them just dead ends into a tree and the car just drops. No, it just goes... I think the Statham's probably actually the most pro that I, Apart from The Rock, I mean... The, the rock, rock saves that movie. The Rock joining the series, I have to say, was probably like the reason I started paying attention again. Because yeah. I was like, Toretto is good. He's like a gorilla who drives fast cars. Really All well. he does is drive a shit. Yeah, and then The Rock is just like, I'm going to smash it. More than drive into it, I'm going to wreck it. He's like the wreck it Ralph of the series. Basically, in the final, what, three minutes he's in in the movie, he saves the entire thing. Like He's got like a minigun. They're all just driving around the city with a bloody... Switching cars and, and yeah, and drone after them, and then the rock just comes in and carries it. I feel I feel like the hacker chicks has a pace should have been really high. Like there's the bit where they're swapping her between cars and they do like a drift in a circle and toss her between the cars. <laughs> and I'm like, if one car went slower than the other and someone was still hanging on, she'd get ripped in half. Like a low hanging branch or something. Just like smacks, smacks her. Yeah. yeah. They're like, now we need you to put on this hairnet. Why? Because we're going to throw <laughs> you through a tree. What? And we don't want you getting tangled in anything. Pretty much. So that was good. Um, yeah, Statham was really prepared. I felt like he just predicted a lot of stuff. I felt like he should have won. He should have won. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so the amount of shit that they pulled was just <laughs> overly unnecessary. I'm going to drive a car through a building into another building and, and out then... into, like, dropping it into the river. It's just... It was a nice scene, yeah. though. Like, yeah, and then yeah, then there's Toretto like bench pressing the car. I don't even know if you can do that. Someone, please look up the stats on how heavy that car is, because I'm fairly certain you can't like how tanky Toretto was. Toretto versus car. 
when he, I, I'm pretty sure when we were watching it, the minute Toretto said, I'm going to lift the car, a lot of us were just like, oh shit, you are. <laughs> <laughs> that's when half the cinema got up and walked out. It's very divisive, that statement, where Toretto's just like, I'm going to lift it. <laughs> You're just like, half the video is like, <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine Fast and Furious was like a serious movie where everything was like, Probable. Uh, I could not. Like, as soon as they throw yeah. the chick onto the car, she just slides off <laughs> off the back, and they all run over her. And they're just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we're back together. They're just like duct taping. <laughs> they drive the car out of the building and just uh, let the car go. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and then um, yeah, the rock last scene comes in with a minigun. Kills a drone with an ambulance or whatever it is by driving on top of it. He pretty much Bruce Willis is the drone. Yeah, he pretty mm. much he wins for him, basically. I like the bit where he um, breaks out of his hospital stuff, attempting. <laughs> that was good. Oh, that was good. He's like, Daddy's got to go kick ass now. He's he's such a badass. He's great. He's basically the Rock being the Rock, yeah. and like, and having um, what's his face. Toretto doing stupid shit. <laughs> and the Rock's just like, <laughs> gonna have to clean up after. And then there's Paul Walker, who's meant to be like, he's meant to be like the more like agile of the two of them, but then we watch like the scene where he's fighting that slick back hair security dude, and they're like, you're a terrible fighter. I know you say you're an FBI agent, but I feel like the only time you're good is be either behind the wheel of a car or with a gun in your hand. Yeah. Like, on your video piss, you're not that good. Not that amazing. Yeah, the only reason he won against that dude was he tied his legs to the Machine. It's, just, it's just the corny, find a way out sort of luck. Like yeah, like sense. Indiana Jones style. Just yeah. like, Yeah, other than that, it was a good movie. I thought it was um, good. It was fun. It was entertaining to watch, that's for sure. It was like 90% action. Yeah, it really so pretty. Really pretty. I felt like a lot of the scenes that were just really good were just like, the race girls, and I'm pretty sure there's not that many of really Oh, the butt shots, movies. like, through the entire just movie, where the camera's, like, down there. There's, like, 30 seconds of ass shots. I'm pretty sure there's a cameraman that they pay who just walks around with the camera, like, at pelvis height, and just, like... <laughs> That's <laughs> pelvic Joe here. Yeah. He's yeah. specially trained with the camera, but we don't judge him for that. Yeah, he's got, like, a gimbal rig on his hip, and he just clips the camera to <laughs> You ready, Joe? <laughs> ready, let's go! And he's got like four hours of ass tape just like walking around. <laughs> they just cut it in to see a bit. Slow motion with rap music. <laughs> That's how they start off like a good, you know, yeah. half of the scenes in the movie. It's just like gratuitous ass shots. Gratuitous. Every time they drive to a race event, everyone's like, all the chicks are like nearly butt naked and the guys are shirtless. And like, they're cars <laughs> with really hot exhausts. And you're wearing what? And they're in the desert. For and they're in the desert. And like, how do you not like destroy yourself? Just never mind. They just need to drive at it. I guess. Otherwise, the, um, the Mr. Walker tribute, pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I was surprised he didn't die in the movie, to be honest. I thought they were going to just kill him. I in thought the movie. he would be killed off in some kind of epic saving everyone way. But mm. that was a nice surprise, I guess. That's probably the only plot twist you expect. Yeah. The action sequences I thought were really good. They were very, like, sharply shot in really great detail. They're like mm. Matthew Riley on script, on, like, they in a movie. Good, yeah. But they, I love them really improbable, which is why we have nitpicks about them. But, like, that's beside the point. You've got to suspend your disbelief. I think they bit. definitely. They definitely filled it all with action. Like, it didn't feel too overdone, surprisingly. Mm. <laughs> Fast and Furious. You always expect Fast and Furious to be really overdone. Like, the, and, and, like one of the signature scenes is they're racing down the highway. Not the highway, like a quarter mile. A quarter mile is like the big theme in there. A quarter mile. You live your mouth and you're alive a quarter mile. Ride or die. Yeah, ride or die. Yeah. <laughs> and then Toretto, like, jumps over, like, a train or something. Like, jumps past a train. And I'm like, it's a train in your neighborhood. Is that no? No, it wasn't even a neighborhood. It was like a quarter mile of like empty back road or something. Um, yeah, the Paul Walker tribute I felt was really good. Like they drive and then they split off, and, and you're like, you can hear people like you crying. Hear the feels, just the feels happening. It was good. I thought it was really nice. Um, there's been a lot of tri there's a lot of tributes done with that. Like GTA Five, <laughs> GTA Five recently had like, have you seen that? The bolt. They just have player characters like shave their heads in the thing, and then they do like they park the cars and they go. We'll probably put a link in the description somewhere. Yeah, well, it's, not it's not bad. It's not bad. It's some pretty good machinima, but there's some sequences where, like, that if they're doing anything other than driving in the GTA V sequences, they're a little bit weird because the characters can't do anything else other than run about and do like random party yeah. motions, and you're like, okay, cool. 
Well, the other movie we saw, probably I guess compared the two, is Age of Ultron. Age of Ultron. Now we don't have that many much, that many nitpicks with that because it's Marvel and it's. I'm sure there is. I feel like there is quite a bit of nitpicky about, but there's like the whole fanboy sort of screen in front of it, so you kind of see. Mm-hmm. It's like so we're, we're, we're heavily biased. We're heavily yeah. biased about it. So if you want a uh, unbiased review, then uh, click away. We're just going to be talking about how much we like the film. No, there was one thing they. I think they try to fit too much into it. Like apparently, there's an extra half an hour to an hour of footage that they had to cut down because the producers didn't want it to be that long. Direct this cut. I want to see that. Yeah. So get the DVD or Blu-ray when it comes out. Yeah. Um, yeah, it'd be really good. Um, yeah, the, the sheer amount of characters they're getting in there now. I feel like I feel like you're right about them like trying to squeeze a lot in because even in the opening sequence, they're just randomly fighting. In like a in a lair in Hydra or something, and you're like, where's the background? Yeah. It's not as if they they give a briefing. Like even in the Winter Soldier, they give a briefing. Like this is a ship. It's taken over by pirates. I they're sending the cap in. They do mention that they're trying to track down the last of Hydra's forces or something like that, but they don't mention like where they it's get not, leads or anything. It's like not that. done in that much depth. Depth, and there's a lot of moments where they're just like, like I just know where it is. You know, or what's happening. If you haven't seen Ultron, by the way. Click away now because this is spoiler. Oh, yeah, spoilers everywhere. It's yeah, the wall behind us. Spoilers all over it. It's yeah, we should just green screen spoilers in the background. Spoilers hanging from the ceiling. Yes. <laughs> well, there's a spoiler. Look, quick, get it. <laughs> um, yeah, um, they they give very little exposition as to why, and especially like you know the bit where Black Widow gets captured. I'm going a bit ahead, but you know the bit where Black Widow gets captured by Ultron. And she somehow manages to find the little Morse the mor- code. No, she has like a Morse code thing, and they never explain how it works. And surely Ultron would have like run her through an EMP thing and shut down all her electronics. But no, she just like. And Ultron's like, "What are you doing back there?" And she's like, "Oh, nothing." She's like, okay. "Serving you too." <laughs> okay. Have you yeah. seen the one with the cats on it? No. Yeah, it's. It's, it's Ultron really himself, the best character, I think. Best, one of the best villains, I thought. He, I expected more, more Bane in him, like to be more afraid. But then you think about it, that he's like Tony Stark. Yeah. He's basically Tony Stark's evil clone. I and think he they does did a really good job, like voice acting him. The line, he got the best lines in the movie. Yeah, he did a lot of the really narcissistic patter that Tony Stark does as well. But it's just like, yeah, it's intelligent, but it's also extremely Starky. The way he talks, I don't yeah. know if like it's snarky, but it's like I didn't bit. like this stuff that much. All this, yeah, I don't. I, I don't. Like Hawkeye. Hawkeye is Hawkeye, Hawkeye was the believable much needed um, screen time and like yeah. story, and he was a lot more human, I think, than a <laughs> lot of characters because he he doesn't have any other special ability than the fact that he can shoot arrows really well, really fast, really far, like really accurately. Um, the cap. We're just ruling out the cap because the cap's like the pinnacle of humanity, and it's the cap, so he's like the best that there can be. Yeah, you can tell he does like the sheer amount of effort he has to put into down some enemies compared to other people. He doesn't have like the the AOE clearing Sh- ability of shield punching and yeah. drop kicking the shield through zombies to like not zombies but through like robots, robots, yeah. robots, <laughs> the Ultron robots. Um, Official <laughs> public play pronunciation of robot, robot, <laughs> robot. Just for uh, yeah, though. Vision, pretty cool. Yeah, I felt like Vision <laughs> was... He was good, but the actor that they used annoyed me. I don't know what his name is, but he's, like, very... I don't know what the word is, but he just I annoyed me. I thought he did okay. He, I think he's meant to seem very, like, neutral, neutral. pacifist, but yeah, he's also yeah. got a ton of power to back him. Yeah, I think that's what annoyed me about... I think Vision, the hero, annoyed me in the first place, because he's, like, an android who looks like a human who... He's, like, pink. Pink. <laughs> the color scheme is so dumb. It's like red, green, and, and like yellow. If he made, if they made him even like red and gray, or red and black, or red and white, I would just redress. Believe it. it, but like no, the color schemes. I did like um Andy Circus. He was a nice. Surprise. Oh, and Andy Circus coming in is like the one of he the beefed ba- up quite a bit. Yeah, he beefed up and got like one of those super trendy like weird haircuts. And then there was the scene where Ultron, like, beats his arm off by accident, just in a rage, and then he's like, oh, <laughs> it'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, Ultron was, he was really well done, I think. If he'd, been, obviously, if he'd been done badly, it would be good. Yeah, it would be <laughs> There's some stuff where it's like, the twins somehow come across him in the church randomly, and you're like, wow. There's, there's another thing as well, with and the end of, like, Guardians of the Galaxy, I think, or something else. There's a there's a stinger. I know there's so many stingers, but there's a stinger at the end where 
you see the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver locked up in, like, a cage. Yeah. And they don't say how they got out. I think that could have... Yeah, it's... And apparently they volunteered as well to be the... Yeah, so how... Like, are they retconning that? Because I feel like the writers are just like... Shit, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> We've been... Put them in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's... It's hard, I think, when you try... You can tell that this one, they've had to try and squish enough stuff into it for it to yeah, tie it's up it's the previous, like, ten movies and still be able to lead on to the next, like, ten movies. Yeah, I can imagine the writer's office where they're doing all their stuff is just, like, strewn with coffee cups and they're just, like, ripping their hair. they for, like, four weeks. They right? just finish writing and they're like, wait, what about this guy? <sighs> okay. Quicksilver, I was surprised he died. I expected someone to die. Didn't think it, was. He, he, it was a pretty good way to die, though. It was. For him, because, like, the way they did his death, you didn't see that coming, and then he collapses, which is the same thing he said to Hawkeye when you ran him over. Yeah. First time around, but yeah. There were some good quips in there. Some, kind of some really fun um, ones. Captain America Square and stuff, the hide the cucumber or zucchini. Or hide the zucchini, and you're just like, the stark. It's more of a pickle, <laughs> actually. I think it'd be bigger. A bean. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, there was a lot of I felt like the fight at the end the very like the end fight went the same sort of way as Avengers it did feel a bit same <laughs> like I guess it is just sort of the whole <laughs> bless you thank you just the um standard robots like there wasn't that much it was just like minions flying in they they needed a way for it to be like it was like mass. playing left for dead with only one type of zombie and tons of them running at you. Yeah, it's like, they literally did like. that. They were just like, we're going to create like a buttload of them. Before it was the Chitauri, where they're just like a mass of expendable, like excusable things to destroy. It wasn't humans. It yeah. was like near, like biological aliens that they could just like, pound into little it's, pieces. I think Vision seemed a little bit underpowered <laughs> yeah. from what you saw. Like he just, after he like wipes Ultron from the system, uh, he like lets go and like drifts, and Ultron just back smashes him into the. I'm done here. Pretty much, I'm like, hey, dozed off. <laughs> or are you overwhelmed? You don't see that happen in Marvel where people just pass out after doing something. It's weird. I don't know. Um, Vision is definitely new. I'm not sure how I feel about him, like, as a character. I don't. Know, I've never really enjoyed Vision as like a comic character. I feel like out of the new Avengers that they've set up at the end of the movie, Vision is the most powerful. Though. Like they have no Thor. They have no Hulk, so that's already, like, two of the big... Hulk and Thor, like, carry. Not gonna lie. Just they're, carry. They're pretty, pretty ridiculous. Stark yeah. does a fairly good job. Stark though. does good, a good job, like, of just being intelligent. He's, like, the brains, so he's just, like, 10th floor, that building flies in. And he can top. do a fair bit of, like, big AOE stuff. Yeah, and he does a lot of, like, rescue jobs as well. Without Thor and Hulk. It's just... Yeah, Thor with his hammer. I love the way he flies, though. Even when he flies downwards, he's, like... He has to spin. <laughs> <laughs> he has to fly backwards. Power charge it to, like... Um, what's the other thing that we thought was pretty good? Um, Hulkbuster? Hulkbuster armor was good. The jackhammer fist scene, I thought that was really amusing. Yeah. I feel like they've taken a bit more of a cue from Guardians of the Galaxy, especially the way they do humor in the Avengers, because there's more, like, one-liner quips, and there's bits that are just funny at moments that you just don't expect it. Like, during the battle sequence where... Quicksilver runs past Hawkeye and he's just like, keep up, old man. And he's just like, no one would know. No one would know. When's the last time I saw him? I saw you. Ultron was sitting on him. I'm going to miss the poor bastard. That was, I like that. It was a great movie. That, that, was my... that There needs to be a Hawkeye film. I would watch that. So oh, Which seems OP as well. She seems OP, but for like people who actually follow Marvel, they nerfed her quite a lot. Yeah. Because if you if you follow like the House of M series where she literally has a mental breakdown and rips reality to pieces and rebuilds it, where the mutants are on top and the people are like subjugated, that's insane. Like that she did that because she was having a bad day, mm. like just a meltdown, that happens. Whereas in this movie she's just got telekinesis and like the ability to control people's minds with red <laughs> red yeah. Yeah. And I like the fact that um, like Quicksilver was saving people from the train. He actually gets winded at the end. He's like, <sighs> woo! Yeah, he's woo! pretty damn yeah. speedy. He's pretty fast. Yeah, it's um. I feel like the two times we've seen Quicksilver was like X Men Days of Future Past. I prefer this Quicksilver. I think. I don't know. I felt like the other Quicksilver was cool. He seemed more powerful because when he puts his headphones on, in in Future Past at least, he puts his headphones on and the world just goes like slows down and he just randomly like jogs through. 
Yeah. And like makes people punch themselves and like deflects bullets and stuff. I thought it was pretty cool. I guess. Yeah. See, I prefer this actor. I think the actor. The actor is good. Yeah, but they. I felt like they could have taken more of the character than Quicksilver from the 1980s or whatever had. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about them like weirdly retconning because. X-Men obviously did happen in the same universe. Yeah. And are they going to address that? Because Quicksilver then was a, a lot cooler than Quicksilver now, but Quicksilver now is quite a good actor. Yeah. Like, they should put some of that it's, in there. It's tricky. You I can't guess. have two versions of the same character and just not justify why he wasn't there. Pretty much. You know? It's weird. It's like, like suddenly changing Captain America to be like, I don't know, a Johnny Depp. <laughs> 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 just the way he runs. <laughs> or Jack Sparrow with the shield. I mean, just... <laughs> uh, yeah. I remember this is the day you almost caught Captain America. <laughs> just jumped. <laughs> just, I would pay to watch that. Just like Captain Jack America. <laughs> Why is the rum gone? <laughs> Captain America, you can't drink. Where is the rum gone, Avengers? <laughs> ah, the key phrase is Captain do whatever I want. <laughs> Where's my ship? <laughs> wow, imagine that pirate, half pirate, half American painter. He doesn't even know how to throw the shield properly, he's just like, <laughs> like, frisbees it and doesn't know how to bring it naked. He doesn't, doesn't even frisbee it, he's like, throws it, <laughs> like, <laughs> frying pans towards he it. He rolls it and there's like, like, loaded pistols in it, so it just fires as it rolls. <laughs> you see him using it as like a wok. Like, yeah, like some sauce. <laughs> Made some yesterday. I think he eventually got horribly wrong. Yeah, Captain. And yet so right. horribly right. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see like Ultron be like, Where is the star? And then you see Captain America just like, Oh this thing. He just puts it in his shirt. It starts. Just just swallows it and runs away. <laughs> Everyone else is just like seriously fighting. You so just much see in more the background him running away with like five robots chasing up. So much more antique. Like just rolling on like the, the big wheels. <laughs> I'd watch that. I would watch that. Um, Please. what's... Yeah, yeah, I was saying the... The the fight went through the same sort of progression that you expect in Avengers. Like, in the first Avengers, you see them all doing a separate thing, and then there's Hulk smash. Hulk goes off and smashes everything, and you get, like, 20 minutes of Hulk just ripping things apart with his bare press hands. Press A to Hulk smash. Yeah, press A to Hulk smash. And then, at the end, like, everyone comes together, and they're all fighting over one same area. That's, that happened in Avengers 1, I'm pretty sure. Like, where they're all... They all team up again in the street, and they're, like, the fighting. Circular yeah, cinema. Yeah, circular, and the camera's panicking. Whereas this one was more... Of course, more epic, because there was, like, waves of them, and they're just trying to basically capture the flag, stop them from touching the drill. It was good. And then the last scumbag half-robot just goes... Really and they're like, Oh, God! And then Stark is like, I need to prepare for this! Quick! <laughs> that was dumb, that last bit. Okay, like, say whatever you want, but that last bit was dumb. I'm going to convert the drill with my chest laser from red to blue. I don't know how that worked. It's just I think he was One like, part I thought was hilarious, just on that, like, the whole floating island. Nick Fury's appearance is in that movie. Like, when did you decide to show it's up? Just, you expect him now to just, like, pop out of a toilet or something like that. Like know. that guy from, like, Get Smart, or just comes yeah. up, like, sticks his head up the toilet, here's your latest mission. <laughs> Flush themselves that's, that's what I'm expecting from Fury now. Like, mm. He just rocks up randomly. Or like, you know, Cap will be like walking along one day in New York and just like a sewer grate pops open and Fury's like, I need you! <laughs> Here's some intel. Meet me at that phone booth. I care a lot about you. Yeah. yeah, he's gone from like, badass sort of thing to he's like, I'm just an old man now. Randomly I AOE. I care about you guys. <laughs> A random old man who can disappear and reappear when Just like that um, Homer Simpson thing, you know, when he just fades back into the book. <laughs> you go, lads, I care about you. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm I, I think it's pretty good, though, that they took him out of the series a little bit more because it might have just be crowded. And uh, from what I remember, S.H.I.E.L.D. was taken down, so as the former director of S.H.I.E.L.D. I can imagine, like, any new villains just... The Avengers 3, there's just going to be like 50 Avengers, and this one villain is just like, it's just getting out of control. I didn't plan it. It's going to be the Andy Circus villain, you know it. It's going to be him with like one arm and just be like, <laughs> and it's like, you oh. know how there's, there's some parts where Ultron will address them all individually and be like, Captain America, Iron Man, and this guy will have to be like, <laughs> it's been like half an hour <laughs> just <laughs> addressing one linering each of them. Yeah, and then someone in the back someone's like, Why don't we just get him while he's still talking? <laughs> just have. <laughs> Pretty much. 
And that would be the last Avengers movie you know, if it was. Yeah, I think the the funnest part, like there were a lot more new gimmicks. Like um, they gave Hawkeye a lot more skill, like a lot more screen time, and his choreography was oh, a lot more nice. believable, which was really fun. Like if he's not in it anymore, it's a good way to sort of have him in the. Mm-hmm. Black Widow, I think, needs a bit of a buff. But she's just meant to be assassin. Like, yeah, she's like, meant to be assassin. Like, so it's not like she's meant to be hard, a hard hitter. Um, but I liked. I just really enjoyed the interplay between Thor and Captain America, where he's just like, "Use my shield for this and this and this." <laughs> you guys well just give him the shield. <laughs> just <laughs> give him a replica. And then, one thing I actually thought about this: it was very like, um, felt very Mass Effecty. Where it's just like you have your squad of bros, and then you just get them all together, go beat some stuff up. I, I could see that as a mass movie. Like, the individual storylines, and then just the... I feel like it would be good. If they made, if Bioware made, like, an Avengers game, I would play that. Yeah. And they can't, like, the problem is they can't now. I don't think they can, because they already have Disney Infinity, and that's where they put all their, like, nonsense yeah, in. Struggles. It's just kind of annoying. Yeah, right. See, like, you had a mass movie, I think you could do a Guardians of the Galaxy-ish. Like, Except Shepard would be, like, really drunk all the time. Shepard, Captain Jack. Yeah, well, I think they did pretty well. I, I don't know, I don't really see an amazing game. Like, what were those games that were on 360? It was Ultimate Alliance. They were okay, yeah. in terms of, like... I had my lunch here, so it's like, I'm still staring at it. <coughs> um, yeah, no, it was... Yeah, I feel like it would be good. I don't know, I never played Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I'm pretty sure I have it on it, but I never played it. Well, we've been waffling for about half an hour, so... It was good. I thought... What would you give Fast and Furious out of ten? Out of ten? I don't know. <sighs> Depends. There's, like, the... What would you give it as far as all movies go? Or what would you give it as far as... I think for, like, time's sake, let's just go as, far, go as far as all movies go. Okay, we'll give it a seven. Seven? Yeah, I'd give it, like, a seven, seven point five. Because the cars were real nice. Yeah. And butt shots. Yeah. Not that I needed them to be in the film, but it's just, like, they're there. The action what sequences are really good as well. Age of Ultron. Then. I'd give it like an 8 or a 9. I'd give it an 8, 8.5. And, eight and a half. Yeah, it didn't blow me out of my socks no. per se. It didn't have the same wow factor as the first event. Yeah, so. because the first event is the first time you saw it, so you're inoculated against too much of the awesome. Too much awesome. Yeah. What I really am excited for, though, is Gun- the new Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, please uh, give me more. Give me more. Anyway. Star Wars, though. Anyway. We, we're getting time to sidetrack. Mm, this has been the Brothers Review. Two yeah. movies at once, you get a two for raw uncut. That's yeah. our working title for now. That is. Yeah. See ya. See you, nerds. Next Bye. time.